they had noticed a change. He wasn't like he used to be. He'd retreat to the cellar, quiet, almost sullen, and write for hours. His interest was fading. Seemed to be fading. He would smoke cigarettes. He'd try to quit and watch neutered cats still trying to have sex in the basement. Biting her neck like he used to when she invited his entry. Only now, she'd turn over onto her side, his jaws still clamped down on her neck, back legs paddling her tail as if trying to kickstart a motorcycle. She merely lay there, mewling occasionally, as he fondled her like a human might in some sort of confused ecstasy, hand paws gripping what would be her thighs. The drive was still there. The ability still flared with desire and utility. He wasn't the same. The drive still flared. The ability and libido and utility still came with unsurpassed finesse in his own mind. But she just lay there on her side, forgetting his name, slowly separating as this new man had requested, teetering always on the edge, the brink, the thesaurus forgotten, the unabridged dictionary dusty still, as he thumbed through it, hungry for new words and new ways of seeing, yet unable to keep them down, write them down. He gagged on atmosphere, stomach cramped and tired all times like a dog except for bedtimes alone. No more normalcy or stability of the ever unknown. He was inkling the answers too soon for family and friends to digest. He looked up from the floor at the human breathing fire and scribbling blackness into a square tree. It meant nothing to him as his daughter mate broke free of his incestuous impotence. He crouched over and licked his member, the human, still engrossed in whatever kept it from the others waiting upstairs and watching a colored light show cast in flickerings from a small magic box. It meant nothing to him. What had just passed with a yowl and a perturbed growl slap was as good as sex to him. It was time to go upstairs and be petted.